Now let's talk about some tips and tricks that can help you to overcome that deficiency of not having that gift of gab. And one of the key tricks, and this is a very easy trick to implement, is that it's very easy to ask good questions. And the thing about questions is that when you are relying on the gift of gab, you're trying to think of what to say in that exact moment. And with questions, you can actually think ahead of time of what questions to ask. Before you go into a meeting, you can identify and make a list of these are the questions I should ask before you make a call. And you can memorize that list so you don't have to rely on that very quick instinct of thinking about what to say in the exact moment. The other thing about questions is that you can ask the same questions every time. I'm gonna actually show you a, an example of some questions that I like to ask in a couple slides. These questions I asked at the beginning of every meeting. So when you start asking the same questions, not only is it less effort to try to you know look at the list and memorize the list, but it's very easy to remember those questions and then always have at the top of your mind what question you need to ask. The other great thing about questions is that questions get the prospect talking. So if your deficiency is that you don't have a strong gift of gab and aren't real talkative, well, one trick that you can do is get the other person talking so that you, you don't even have to worry about talking. And the great way to get the other person talking is just to ask questions. If you go to lunch with someone, every once in a while ask an open-ended question, the other person will do all the talking and you can just sit there and listen. And while the other person's talking, you can be thinking about the next question to ask. So let me give you some examples of questions that I like to ask. So here are some introduction questions. These are questions I would often ask at the beginning of a meeting, say the beginning of an appointment, if you go out to a prospect's office or if you meet someone over coffee, right at the beginning of that meeting is when you might want to do some chit chat. And if you are relying on your gift of gab, you may try to think of what to say in that exact moment. And if you're more introverted, you might not have something to say. So here's some questions that I would ask. And I would ask these exact same questions at the beginning of every meeting. How's your day going so far? So that gets the other person talking about what's going on. And by the way, this is an open-ended question. So that's not saying, are you having a good day with the answer being yes or no. It's how's your day going so far. So it's a little more open, could get the other person talking. Then right after that, I would always ask a question related to either the weather, sports, recent current event or whatever. You can always say something about, oh, it's beautiful outside or man, this weather's horrible. Or did you see that recent game? Or can you believe what's going on with that? And that's a good way to start a little chit chat. If you're talking to someone in a business setting and they're an employee somewhere, whether or not they're a prospect or a networking partner, you could ask them, hey, how long have you been working here? What did you do before this? Where are you from? So this is not a complete list, but you can see these are just really good questions to start a conversation and open a meeting and get some dialogue going. And the key thing here is, is that these are the exact same questions you can ask at the beginning of every meeting, the beginning of every conversation you talk with someone. So a real easy list to memorize and then to start a little chit chat at the beginning of your meeting. If you're meeting with a prospect, you can also ask questions to learn about what's going on with them. And I refer to these as current state questions. What's going on with their current state? And ideally you want your current state questions to be related to the product or service that you sell. So if you sell cars, your current state questions would be, do you have a car today? What do you drive? What year is it? How many miles does it have? How's it running? Uh, and whatnot. So your current state questions will be different depending on what you sell. Using an example of selling web design services, here's an example of current state questions. Do you currently have somebody to help with your website? Are you currently working with an agency? How happy are you with the person helping? When was the last time you refreshed your website? How much traffic are you currently getting? What platform do you use? And so on. So these will be unique for you, but I'm providing these examples so you can look and see what current state questions look like. These are questions you could have in front of you on a piece of paper if you can't remember them. No problem looking down and these get the other person talking. So if you're worried about not having that gift of gab, having this set of questions here definitely fills the empty space of not having something to say. Another category of questions you could ask are called pain questions. And these are questions that probe for pain points. Hopefully you design these so that they probe for the pain points that you help to solve or fix. And going back to that same example of selling web design services, here are some examples of pain questions. How important is it for you to get more revenue out of your website? How important is it for you to convert more, get more traffic? So probing for pain in the area where I have something to offer, again, the questions you can memorize and fill that gap. So that's a trick. That's a real easy trick to implement. Create a list, 
Remember the list, have the list in front of you. And those questions will help you with not having something to say or keeping the conversation going or, or keeping you talking. And you'll see here that I went through the, those three different categories of questions. Those are examples of what I would call building blocks. And those are different types of questions. And there's other building blocks that you can create or we can help you to create. For example, you can create a value points building block, which is a list of the benefits for all the different ways that you help. There's a building block for the pain points that your product or service helps make go away. That's something that you can talk about with a prospect. You could certainly create a product building block, which are the key details of, about the product or service that you sell, a name drop building block, which is a customer example that you could share with a prospect, and then a closing building block, which is what you're trying to close for and what you should say when it's time to close. And so those are all building blocks. And as you can see, we can put all those building blocks to create a cold call script. And the cold call script can definitely help us when we're more introverted with knowing what to say and having something to say when we pick up the phone and end up with, on the phone with prospect and it can be an outline of the different things to talk about and that can help you with overcoming the challenge of not having the gift of gab. We can use those same building blocks and mix and match them and move them around a little bit to also create a meeting script so that when you go meet someone over coffee or go on an appointment to their office, you can have a structured way of how to organize the different things you want to talk about. And so all of that can kind of help you with knowing what to say and overcoming that challenge of not having the gift of gab or not being as talkative. Now I showed you the putting those building blocks together to create a cold call script. We actually have a training module if you want to kind of see how to use those building blocks and organize those and go through those on a cold call. We actually have a training module on how to make cold calling easy on now this is on YouTube and this is on a playlist on our channel called the Smart Sales System Sell Smarter Not Harder. So if you go to that playlist there is a training module on cold calling that will show you how to use that script. We're not going to go into that here today, but that would also help you with you know, overcoming being more introverted. The next tip or trick is to become more prepared for objections because objections are going to come up in almost every conversation with a prospect. And there's only a few different objections that will come up. I'm not interested. We don't have budget. We already use someone. We're not looking at making any changes, blah, blah, blah. So again, we're trying to be a better salesperson and know what to say when we're more introverted. Well, if you know objections are gonna come up, a real easy trick here is to prepare responses for those and to have those ready in your head or on paper in front of you. And so how that helps with being introverted, being introverted, the, the challenge is not being able to think real quickly what to say next. Well, these are situations that you know are gonna come up, so prepare for them and that will help you with knowing what to say. Now, here's a trick. I showed you those building blocks earlier. You can use those same building blocks for your objection responses. So you know that you're gonna run into, I'm not interested, we're not making any changes, don't have budget. You can respond to those with those same pain questions. Hey, I understand uh, if I could ask you real quick, how important is it for you to improve your conversion rates for your website? So that's a way to respond to that objection. Now, I would say that's a very good way to get around that objection and keep the conversation going. But we're here talking about being introverted. That's also a good way of a trick to make it easy for you to know what to say. So it's this is decreasing those situations where you don't know what to say and can't think of something to say real quickly. And also, I think that what I'm giving you here to say is something really effective in that particular situation. You could respond to those same objections with your current state questions. Someone says, oh, we don't have budget right now. Oh, I understand. If I could ask you real quick, when was the last time you refreshed your website? So you're getting away from that objection. You also will run into prospects saying, just send me your info. Sure, I could certainly do that so I know what to send you. Can I ask you real quick, how important is it for you to improve your conversion rates? You can also respond to that same objection with your current state questions. So that's an example of using those same building blocks for responding to objections and also an example of how being more prepared for objections can help you to overcome that challenge of not having the gift of gab or not having the ability to think real quickly on what to say next to keep conversations going. Now, what I showed you is part of a full module on how to handle and get around objections. And that is also on that playlist on YouTube on the Smart Sales System playlist list and it's a module called here are some objection handling examples and so you can watch that full training module to get all the details and we go into that whole methodology and a bunch of other objections and objection responses as well so be sure to check that out
The next tip is that you don't have to be a pushy closer. So often, if you think about an extrovert being a salesperson, you can often picture someone who's real charming when it's time to close or is able to be real aggressive and strong and pushy when it's time to close. I personally believe you don't have to be pushy when it's time to close if you do all the other stuff correctly, meaning if you build interest by communicating value and focusing on benefits, and if you find pain, then it's easier to close. And I'm going to show you another trick here, which is if you ask good questions, then closing will become much easier. And the type of questions I'm going to show you now are different. Uh, so again, I'm here, I'm giving you more questions to ask, which also help you with having something to say and getting the other person talking. But these questions will also help you to be a better closer because what I'm going to show you are qualifying questions. These are questions that filter bad prospects out by learning more about them. You know, like for example, if you find out someone doesn't have money and will never have money, then that's someone that you shouldn't spend your valuable time with. So you would basically get that prospect out of your funnel. So then you don't need to be that hard closer and pushy closer, or try to be Mr. or Mrs. Charismatic to try to close because you're not even going to be dealing with that person anyways. You're going to be dealing with better prospects. So I'm going to give you four categories of qualifying questions here. So the first category is need to purchase. And so what motivated you to look at us? Do you mind if I ask why you met, met with me? What improvements could you see with by purchasing this? What will happen if you don't purchase anything? Is there a date when you need to make this? What happens if the purchase isn't made? What is the time frame? So I'll, we could go into detail on why you should ask those questions. But And I'm going to provide a training module that explains those after I show these four categories. But basically, these questions try to determine how much does the prospect need what you sell instead of wanting what you sell. The next category is, are they able to purchase from a financial perspective? What's your budgetary range? Is the budget approved? Do you have funds allocated to this? What's the budget? Are there other purchases that this may get used for? And so on. So these are the questions to ask to see if the prospect has the ability to purchase. Are you dealing with the decision maker? What's the decision making process? What parties will be involved? What are the key factors? What functional areas will be impacted by this? Is there a committee? Who's the ultimate decision maker? Who's the person that signs this? Intent to purchase. What other options are you purchasing? How far along are you with them? How do you feel about your other options? What do you like about them? How do they compare to us? Is there a reason why you would choose us over them? If you had to make a decision today, what, which way would you lean? Those are all qualifying questions. So you don't need to memorize those all today. In fact, there's a whole training module that explains all those and that this is also on that playlist, the smart sales system, sell smarter, not harder. And this training module is called how to qualify a customer in sales. These questions will help decrease the need for you to be a big extrovert when it's time to close. You can be more analytical, asking better questions and then make better decisions, which prospects do you even try to close? And notice I'm talking about being a better closer here. This is not even our training module on being a better closer. This is our training module on qualifying and asking good qualifying questions. So there's two benefits to these. One is they help you with being more introverted and having something to say. And then they also help you with not having to be as big of an extrovert when you try to close. And there's also a whole nother training module on closing, which has nothing to do with those questions that I just showed you. So be sure to check that out.